Hello and welcome to this week's Engine Show. I hope you have your thinking caps on and have turned on your brain. Well, to be honest, you can't really turn your brain off. Your brain works even when you're sleeping and it's the boss of your whole body. This week, your brain is going to be the star of our show. Your brain is amazing. It helps you breathe without realizing it. It can help you find your way to your friend's house. In fact, it makes you, you. The brain controls everything you do and think and how you move and feel. So let's explore more and discover what is the brain? What does it do? How does it work? How do we learn? How can we help our brains to get better at learning? We'll even give you some special tips to help you pass your next test. So come on now, you brainy bunch. Let's get ready to inquire, discover, and learn about our brains. The brain is in charge of everything your body does. It is boss of your whole body. It is an incredible organ. It outperforms even the very best supercomputer. It can download and respond appropriately to an incredible amount of information. I have a very brainy friend whom I want to come along and help us learn more about the brain. Miss Brain, where are you? Can you see her? She feels squishy and looks a little bit like a cauliflower. Hello, I am Miss Brain. Normally, you can find me in your head. I'm protected by the bones of your skull and the liquid inside it. I need to be protected and carefully looked after, as I'm very sensitive and very important. I control and regulate everything your body does. Brains and computers both break if you drop them, but the good news is, they can both be repaired too. I help you understand the world around you. How do you do that? I receive signals from the outside world through the senses. That's seeing, hearing, touching, tasting and feeling. Once I receive a signal, I can send messages to all the different parts of your body. This means your body can respond in the right way to what is happening around it. So you tell my body what to do? Yes, I told you I'm the boss. Let me show you. This is a hot saucepan full of hot rice. I have just taken it off the stove. Can you touch it? Ouch! That's so hot! Ah, you see, it was your clever brain that had to send a message from your finger that the saucepan was hot and that you needed to move it away very quickly, otherwise you'd get hurt. So, how do you do that? Well, different parts of me control different things. Can we cut you open and have a look inside? No, you can't. But I can take you on a tour of the inside of a brain. Firstly, you can divide the brain into three major parts. The cerebellum, the brain stem, and the cerebrum. Cerebellum. This is a very small portion of the brain, yet very important. The cerebellum helps you maintain your balance and regulate your movements so that you can walk, dance, jump or ride a bicycle. Without the cerebellum, you'll be falling all over the place. Brainstem is what connects the brain to the spinal cord. This is the main pathway for information to move from the brain to the rest of the body. 
The brainstem controls basic body functions that you do without even thinking about them, like breathing, digesting food, heart rate, and whether you're awake or sleepy. Cerebrum. The largest part of your brain is responsible for all the thinking. It also controls your voluntary muscles, the ones you move by choice. Without the cerebrum, you wouldn't be able to play football, talk to your friends, or draw a picture. Ah, that's making sense. I was actually told if I put my two fists together, it looks a bit like the cerebrum and is about the same size. Yes, that is right. The cerebrum is split into two halves. We call them hemispheres. The right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. And guess what? The right hemisphere controls the left side of the body. The left hemisphere controls the right part of your body. Wow! So if I wave with my right hand, I need to thank the left part of my brain for helping me. And if I click with my left hand, I need to thank the right hand side of my brain. It's like a crisscross in my body. There's a really fun game you can do at home to make sure you exercise both hemispheres. It's called use the other hand. You need to try to do things using the opposite hand that you usually use. Try eating soup. Be careful, you might spill it everywhere. Oops. Have a go at writing your name. Can you do it as neatly as you can? Ugh. You may feel clumsy at first, but slowly you will improve. How does each hemisphere connect? There are nerves that connect the two hemispheres. Each hemisphere is in charge of different aspects of thinking and understanding. The left hemisphere is in charge of important tasks that have to do with logic, such as in science and mathematics, as well as language and speech. The right hemisphere is the more artistic and creative side of the brain. Wow, now I understand how all parts of me are managed by you. You are one of the most complicated and cleverly put together things. You really are the boss of me. Yes, I am your boss. You need to look after me so that I can keep doing all my jobs very well. Let me tell you a secret. The more you use us brains, the better we work. So let's keep our brains active because next we're going to learn about what happens in your brain when you try and learn. Science, you and me. Miss Brain, where are you? I am trying to learn something new and it's really, really hard. I think I'm just not clever enough. No, 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 that's not true. You can do anything you put your mind to. Your brain might not be ready yet to do it, but your brain can grow and get stronger. In fact, your brain changes every day as you do and experience different things. We call this learning. Knowing what is happening inside your brain when you're trying to learn things can help you learn better and keep you motivated. Well, what is happening? Your brain is made up of trillions of nerve cells that we call neurons. They have very important jobs as they carry messages to different parts of your brain and the rest of your body. They must be very small if I have trillions in my head. What do they look like? Neurons are shaped differently to the other cells in your body. They have tiny branches that look a bit like a tree, and these branches help your neurons connect to each other and send messages back and forth. Every time we learn something new, your brain changes. It builds a new neuronal connection. Your brain will find another neuron to connect to so it can transmit the new message. When we learn facts or a new skill, the neurons look to make connections. They're trying to tell the story of what we're learning and experiencing. When we keep practicing the new learning, the neurons react by communicating with each other, passing messages back and forth, and the connections get stronger and become things that we remember. Oh, is that why after you have learned something new, you need to practice it? Yes, 
If we practice things we find difficult, then our learning will improve. This is because the neurons associated with the task will be used much more often. Every time you practice, the brain builds stronger pathways between these neurons. This is when the learning starts to become easier for you. You can even start to do things without thinking about them. Ah, that is why we get better at things through practice and why it is important that we shouldn't give up if we find something hard. Taking on challenges helps the connection in our brain to get stronger. Think about walking in a forest where there is no path. It's really hard. It's slow. You're getting cut. But the more you walk the path, the easier it becomes because the bushes and the long grass gets trodden down. Eventually, the path becomes tarmac and it's no problem at all to pass. Learning is like this. It reminds me of the time I rode a bike. It was really hard because I had to think of lots of things. Braking, pedaling, steering, and keeping my balance, not to mention staying on the path. But the more I practiced, the easier it became. Until now, I can do it without thinking about it at all. Yes, that's because your neuronal pathways have become really secure. Your neurons have built a bike riding pathway in your brain. The only way to succeed at learning something difficult is to stick with it and to keep practicing. The more you practice, the easier it will become and the better you will become because your neuronal pathways become more secure. That's why the best footballers in the world have to still practice every day, even though they are the best. Oh, I get it. Practice makes perfect. Well, yes, practice certainly makes progress. If you want to get better at learning, practice is always necessary. Taking on challenges and things you find difficult actually makes your brain stronger. If you are challenging your brain, you have to make mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes when I'm learning? Of course. If you're not making mistakes, you are not learning. Let's try an exercise to challenge our brain and connect some neuronal pathways. You can improve your memory by playing some fun memory games. The more we practice with our memory, the better it becomes. You need two people to do it. Do you want to try with me? I put a few objects on the ground, look at them carefully and try to remember them all. I will cover it with a cloth and secretly remove one item. Tada! Which object is missing? It's a bear! You can play it with your friend at home. Keep playing until all the objects have gone and then switch turns. Hello, this is Miss Lillian from Nairobi in Kenya, a teacher from Kidogo. I hear you have been learning about the brain today. Brains are very interesting. But you know whose brains are most interesting of all? Baby's brain. Did you know that in the first 1,000 days of our life, that is from birth to the age of three years, the brains develop more rapidly than any other time in our life? If you think what a baby does is eat, cry, and poo-poo, you are wrong. The baby is taking in turns of information every second and forming new connections in the brain, building its wiring system. The activities that the child will engage in early in their life will determine how well their brain will develop. Simulating the baby's brain will support health brain development and make sure that their brain grows well and reaches its full potential. How can we stimulate the baby's brain? Through simple activities such as singing to the child, encouraging the child to clap and sing a wrong, 
mimicking different noises like that of animals or birds. Example, a cat, meow. Showing the child different objects and naming them. Example, a cow, a ball. So, if there are any babies or young toddlers in your household, remember to engage them, pray with them, talk to them, sing with them as much as you can, so that you help them develop into curious and smart little scientists like you later on. I'm all for now. Bye! Are you a teacher? Do you want to be part of our show? The Africa Teacher Challenge is on. Record a two-minute video lesson on a subject you are passionate about. Upload it on YouTube and send us the link on ngntvafrica at gmail.com. If we use your video in our show, you will receive 150 US dollars. Let's go! Your brain needs to be looked after if you want it to be healthy. Hey, what are you doing? I'm busy studying for a test tomorrow. But it's so late. You should be in bed. I'm just trying to remember a few extra facts. I'll tell you a secret. I'll tell you how to improve your test code tomorrow without doing any extra work. Oh, thank you, Miss Brain, but I don't want to cheat. It's not cheating. It's called sleeping. The quickest and easiest treat for your brain. Let me explain. Us brains need to be constantly repairing ourselves and building new connections between the cells as you learn new things. So while you are sleeping, your brain has the opportunity to repair itself and organize all the new information. The quicker you sleep after revising, the better your brain will perform in your test. Okay, but just let me do one more hour. I think you should go to bed now. Even with one hour less sleep, it can affect your test results the next day. Really? So how much sleep should I have? 7 to 12-year-olds should get between 10 to 12 hours of sleep a night. Adults should get around 8 hours sleep. Less than that, and your brain cannot work properly. Okay then, I guess it's bedtime. But before I go, any more tips for my test tomorrow? In the morning, you need to get some oxygen to the brain. How do I do that? Any physical exercise, like a quick walk to school or a run around the yard, can do this. You need to get moving and pump the oxygen-rich blood to your brain for it to work properly. Great! I'll do some exercise first thing. Yes! Also, scientists have recently learned that just after you exercise, your body produces a chemical that makes you more willing to learn. Okay, I'll miss breakfast and then do some more exercise. No, no, no. Don't miss a meal. Your brain needs to be fed too. What shall I eat? Chocolate or cake? No. Your brain likes a balanced diet full of fresh fruit and vegetables and slow-releasing carbohydrates like porridge, beans and sweet potatoes. Chocolate and cake give you a sugar rush and your brain peaks and then crashes during a test, leaving you feeling less energized than before. Okay then, I'm off to bed. Now, and I'll eat porridge in the morning and walk to school quickly. Anything else, Miss Brain? Just one more thing. Make sure you drink water. Water keeps your brain hydrated. Got it. Time to sleep. Steady supply of oxygen and steady supply of energy. Okay, Miss Brain, I'm going to get an A on this test. Night, night. A star, you got this. Good night, Brain Box.
There are times when we feel sad, angry, or worried. This is normal and happens to everyone, but it can prevent us from doing well at school, sports, or from enjoying our time with friends and family. Here's how to calm your body, clear your mind, and deal with troubling feelings. Let's learn how to focus and feel good again. Your brain is always active. Most of the day, it tries to work out the steps necessary to perform a task. It is always searching your memories for previous experiences and knowledge. We call this the doing mode of your brain. But if a problem involves emotion, we need to change the brain's doing mode into being mode. Would you like to try? Sit comfortably and take a deep breath. In and out. Close your eyes. See your thoughts as little puffy clouds in the sky. White ones for good thoughts, gray ones for worrying thoughts. You aren't trying to stop the negative thoughts and probably couldn't even if you tried. You don't need to get upset, disappointed, or even angry that you're having them. Just see them differently, as little puffy clouds in the sky. They float by, light as air, and eventually, they will disappear. It's time for a brain booster. Which side of your brain is active when you perform the following tasks? Solve a math problem, play chess, write, It is the left hemisphere of your brain that is active when you do the above tasks. The right side is responsible for actions that have to do with creativity and art. Practice is important in learning a new skill because when you practice, your brain grows bigger, the connections between neurons in the brain become stronger, neurons multiply. It is B. Every time you practice an activity, your brain builds stronger pathways between neurons. Remember, the only way to succeed in learning something new or difficult is to keep practicing. In order for your brain to work properly, you need to sleep 10 to 12 hours a day, be active, do sports, and play outdoors. Eat lots of fresh food and vegetables. All of the above. It is all of the above. If you want to do well in school, make sure you get enough sleep, stay active, and eat healthily. My name is Shazmin and I am seven years old. I live in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. I train karate every day after school. People used to tell me karate is for boys, it's not for girls. But I really wanted to do it. <laughs> karate is not about fighting. It's about discipline, setting goals, and working hard to achieve them. I have a green belt, and I'm practicing for a blue belt now. My older sister, Sasha, trains too. She is really good. If you believe in something, go after your goals, no matter what other people say. Whoa! 
My brain is buzzing about all the information that we have learned about the brain and how we learn. I can't believe this marvelous machine is right here inside my head. Miss Brain, you are amazing. After all our inquiring, discovering and learning about the brain, not only have I learned more about myself, but I now know how I can reach my potential. I need to look after my brain, play games and understand that it's very, very important to get a good night's sleep if I want to pass my tests. So, I might just take a little nap until next time. Bye.